Hi everybody, it's Sally here and today I am going to be talking about pattern knitting specifically on the Chunky SK155 machine um, because despite the fact that it is a Silver Reed Knitmaster and one of the things I really like about their machines is that they all fundamentally work the same way. All of these um, knobs on the dial, uh, the rustle levers, the side levers, the things at the front, the weaving knobs, they all work in the same way, irrespective of what model you're working with and what gauge as well, for that matter. So that um, once you've learned how to knit on a silver reed drum patterning machine, you can very easily extrapolate and transfer those skills to a different model. Um, so, but the 12 uh, stitch repeat SK155 has got one or two little quirks to it, which is what I want to talk about today uh, to explain why it is what it is and um, to dispel some myths about it too, hopefully. Um, so first of, course, first of all then, why is it a 12 stitch repeat machine? Well, um, it uses exactly the same technology, mechanics, if you like, of the 24 stitch repeat machine. It's got this card reader at the back of the machine, drums in the carriage, there's the, the pattern reading drums and the sub drums underneath, which transfer the information to the mechanics underneath the carriage itself. And so it's constrained by the dimensions of those bits of equipment. Um, it's one of the, well, I find it interesting because I'm a bit of a maths nerd, but if you actually measure this thing here, it's 108 millimetres across. And so therefore it is no coincidence that if you take that 108 millimetres and then start dividing it by some numbers, that you end up with what you end up with. Because um, if you divide 108 by 24, you get four and a half and well, there's a surprise. The gauge of the standard gauge machine is four and a half millimeters. That's how far apart the needles are. If you divide 108 by 12, you get nine. So gauge of this chunky machine, nine millimeters. I also have a fine gauge machine, which has got a 30 stitch pattern repeat. Divide by 108 by 30 and you get 3.6. Hey presto, that's the gauge of the fine gauge machine the weird little S, uh, HK160 that they produced a few years ago that had that very odd 18 stitch pattern repeat, stitch repeat on that machine, but divide 108 by 18 and you get six. Well, there's a surprise. The gauge of that machine was six millimeters. It's all about the physical dimensions and the mathematics of it. I know some people have said to me, well, why can't you just replace, take that out and replace it with the 24 stitch reader and 24 stitch drum in the back of that? Well, yes, you can. But of course, this then physically has to engage with the needles on this machine. And if you put the alternate teeth back in and they connected with the little tabs on the drums at the back of the carriage, those will then won't hit anything when they come to engage with the needle bed because the one will, knit, will hit that needle, then it'll miss one, and then the third one will hit that one. So you can't replace that with a 24-stitch pattern reader or 24 stitch drums no matter how much you might think you'd like to we've all been there um, it's not physically possible so that's why it is what it is um, and because of that it's exactly the same piece of kit as is in the standard gauge machine which has got every other tooth taken out of it there's every other peg out of here every other tooth out of the drum and for that reason it uses exactly the same size cards as the 24 stitch machine. Now I've got a few of them here. This one is a basic 12 stitch blank. Excuse my dog. He's obviously seen something outside. Percy. If he gets really noisy, I'll put him out. So there's a 12 stitch repeat card. There is a 24 stitch repeat card and because these 12 stitch cards are now harder to get the last lot that I bought in the UK came like this with these lovely stripes up and down them and this is because you can use a 24 stitch card instead of a 12 stitch one 
you just punch in every other column. If I put these cards over each other, hopefully you'll see that they are all exactly the same size, exactly the same dimensions. There they all are. They're all exactly the same size. And so you can use a 24 stitch card. You just punch in every other column. Now, there's the orientation of this 12 stitch one over the top of the 24 stitch one. The 12 stitch, the first hole is right in the bottom right hand corner. So you start in the bottom right hand corner of the 24 stitch card and then you just miss a column and then the third one along, miss four, five, miss six, all the way across. So if you're gonna use these cards, I would you know, stick a line maybe through, um, through the columns that you don't want to punch, pretty much in the same way that they've done with this thing here. But they are all exactly the same size. But because the 12 stitch cards or the 12 stitch mechanism got every other tooth removed, um, where you've got two columns here and then only one column here, that punch is actually not in the centre of these two columns. It's on the right-hand side of it because it's, it's just missing that column out. And so for that reason, you can't turn these ones up the other way. There's no numbering up the other side of this blank card. You have to keep the orientation of that correct. Believe me, I have done the idiotic thing myself of putting one of my pre-punch cards in upside down, didn't realise it, locked the card, thought, well, why the bloody hell is there no pattern on here? Like, Duh. It's because you put it in upside down. And likewise, you can't flip them over. Whereas on some of the regular pattern cards that come with the 24 stitch machine, you can turn it out the other way, turn it over. You've got like four different orientations, but on the chunky ones, you tend to only have one. Um, but, you yeah, know, that's... That's what you can do with your blank cards. You can uh, use a 24 stitch one without any problem at all. Um, I mean, the 12 stitch ones undoubtedly are easier to punch, easier to mark, easier to see. But if you can't get hold of these anymore and they are becoming scarce, then, you know, don't worry, you can use these instead. Um, there is also, I put in, in the files of the Beginner's Circle on Facebook, I've got um, a template for this, which is a means of, and I forgot to bring one with me, of using a 24 stitch card and overlaying it on this stripy thing. And it will then show you the pattern that you would get if you were to use it in the 12 stitch machine. So you can check and see if any of your 24 stitch cards will produce an interesting pattern on the 12 stitch machine. Um, and, uh, Another thing about, you know, people say, oh, you know, this machine's not, not as good as the brother because it's only got a 12 stitch repeat and not 24. Well, honestly, how many times do you need the full 24 stitch repeat? The answer actually is not that commonly. It really is only the single motifs that are affected by it. If you look back through your, your 24 stitch cards, all of them that do things like fair isle, tuck, slip, weaving, they're most likely to have a repeat that is much less than 24. And if it's 12, 6, 4, 3, 2 repeat, you can use those on a 12 stitch card. It's not a problem. Um, I've got, I just brought this book down with me just to, you know, show you, for instance, um, this has got lots of different, this is the Harmony Guide to Machine Knitting Stitches and Designs. So there's lots of ideas in here for blank punch card designs. And if you look through a lot of these patterns, they, they are 24 stitch cards, but you know, they're not a 24 stitch repeat. Some of them are, but not all of them. So um, you know, have a look through all of your pattern books or even your other sets of cards that you've got and see count up the pattern repeat and see where it falls. And if it's, you know, divisible into 12, then you can use it in on your 12 stitch card machine. Um, one of the other things that I did find, I found by accident, it just came in a job lot of things that I bought. Some of you might know these paper pattern templates that Knitmaster produced. Oh, it must've been in the 1970s, I would think. And uh, I bought a job lot of them for my standard gauge machine. And 
I was looking at these, thinking, oh, they're nice tuck stitch patterns. And when I actually opened it and read it, because I looked at them and I thought, those aren't 24 stitch repeats on there. And then when I read it, it said this stitch, the stitch pattern cards in this set, 1011, were designed to be knitted as tuck stitch patterns over every alternate needle using heavy yarns. So actually, these blank templates in here are perfect for the 12 stitch machine. Um, and you can lay your 12 stitch card over these and, and mark it or copy it and mark it. And brilliant, I've, I've used a, these tuck patterns an awful lot. Excellent. So um, just remember that if you see it come up for sale as they do on dear old eBay from time to time, punch set M1011 will fit a 12 stitch machine perfectly. Um, other sources of 12 stitch patterns. Um, this was a book that they produced uh, back a while uh, chunky punch card patterns um, you can still find the book the printed book occasionally but this was a free download from uh, you know machine knitting etc dot com and they've got like a huge resource of pattern books on there and, and some of it is suitable for the 12 stitch machine so that's and the the way the pattern templates are laid out uh, match the 12 stitch cards perfectly and they've got um, tuck, tuck lace, slip, weaving, fair isle, a huge range of different things in there. Um, and Wendy Phillips has also done, if you like the little motifs, the single motifs, particularly if you're knitting for children, um, these ones were, I think, Irene Court in the UK, um, or Machine Knitting Sales UK, uh, she does ship globally, uh, might still have some of these left because um, Wendy isn't selling them herself anymore. Uh, these are little 12 stitch repeat motif patterns. Um, so they're suitable for your 12 stitch machine. Um, so there's, you know, don't be, you know, too sort of like, Ugh, my machine's only got a 12 stitch repeat. It's fantastic choice of stuff out there for a 12 stitch repeat machine. And I actually find that um, because I obviously have got other machines and where I live doesn't get, tend to get terribly cold. I don't actually knit a fair aisle on my chunky very often. I much prefer the textured patterns that you can get on this machine with the tuck and the slit because um, obviously fair aisle fabric tends to knit up really quite thick on a chunky. And um, for that reason, I don't actually use it that much, but um, that's just obviously my personal choice. Um, other people will want to knit a lot of Fair Isle, which it will do beautifully. Now, obviously, this came with the Master Glide carriage. It's got these metal bearings on it, and it is very lightweight to push. I find it a lovely machine to use. So now was my little notebook. Have I gone through? I think that's all I wanted to say, you know, technically about the machine before we actually go into the demonstration. As always, when I'm working with my machine, I have me instruction book to hand um, because you know, all the information you need to operate it is in here let's face it so pattern knitting pattern knitting you they were a bit stingy with the cards on this one I must admit they only gave you five but on page 20 of the manual it does tell you what those five cards will do card one can do basically all of it a is fair isle B is slip stitch, C is tuck, D is punch lace, and E is weaving. So card one does all of them. Card two does tuck and weaving. Card three does fair isle, slip, and weaving. Card four does fair isle, slip, and tuck. Card five does fair isle and punch lace. Um, now, uh, for those of you who've got a standard gauge machine, card three is that like bubble tuck pattern that you see absolutely everywhere. And everyone always raves on about card three, one of my favorites, blah, 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 etc. Uh, it's actually card two in the, the chunky set, produces the nearest equivalent. It's not exactly the same because it only tucks over three rows and not four, but it produces much the same result when you look at it um, after it's been knitted. Um, so they were a bit mean, they only gave you five cards, but as I've just explained, you've got the option to knit 
an awful lot of, or punch an awful lot of um, cards for yourself. So um, uh, if you've got a stand gauge machine, you'll be familiar with this layout and the chunky works in exactly the same way. We'll feed the card into there, lock it, read the pattern in, and then start our pattern knitting. So you need to be able to follow the operating table, which is what appears on the top of page 22. And it shows you all of the settings for the card reader on this bit, the carriage, and what yarn you're going to be feeding in and where, and the direction of knit. Um, and then there's a, the sequence of what you're going to knit is down there. So number one is nearly always the setup row and it generally speaking knitted from left to right. So it's assuming that you're going to start with your carriage on your left, which yes, you can do. But if your carriage happens to be on the right, then you use the, uh, the function of the free pass by flipping the carriage up and moving it to and fro twice to read the pattern into the drums. Same as on the standard gauge. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of Fair Isle, um, including, um, especially for Debbie, as she was struggling with this earlier in the week. And I'm not surprised because it is a, a slightly complicated set of instructions. Um, we'll do Fair Isle and using card number four. So let's find my card four. Standard set, well, we basic set one to five. This was a little storage tip I got out of um, Linda Williams' News and Views, Country Knitting of Maine magazine, about how to store your cards. It's just a big sheet, colour sheet of A3 paper, folded over to make like a little pocket, and I just stuck it down with magic tape, and then folded in half and labelled, and it goes in those nice big plastic boxes that um, I use for storing my punch cards. Anyway, I'm digressing, so card number four. We'll have it at the ready. Now, I do not ever put my punch card in while I'm casting on. It's because you know, if you accidentally have some levers in the wrong position, it can cause all sorts of mayhem when you're trying to cast on. So I don't have it in there when I'm casting on. I've got some spare bits of Aran yarn threaded up. Um, <coughs> and let's go 30. 34, 40 either side. Just a bit of a random number. Um, my side levers currently forward. I've got no card in the machine. Russell levers are on two. Um, I need my stitch size for fair, uh, Aaron weight yarn to be about five. Um, weaving brushes don't need to be engaged because I'm going to do an open cast on with gravel cord. So just thread it up. And run across. I just want to see how much of me you can see on here. Most of me you can see. Right. And so I was teaching somebody how to do this gravel cord cast on. And whilst I was watching her do it, I could see where she'd been going wrong. Um, she'd been putting the thread, the rabbit cord through here and holding it and then sort of doing something random, waving her arms around down here. So the success of this rabbit cord cast on relies on you holding this cord down tight, down under the machine. And you can see me doing that. It's right down under here. There we go. reuse this yarn so it's got knots in it so it's not something I commonly do it's just a bit of practice so now I've knitted a few rows pulled the cord out and I'll put claw weight on each end and in the middle as well maybe two in the middle two in the middle I think So we'll knit a few rows. Oops, 
Well, the yarn's getting caught up here at the back. Serve me right for not winding it back onto the ball. Come here, you little monkey. There we go. I better wind that back up. They don't really want to go wrong on camera, but there we go. So now, um, if I want to follow the, where's it gone? The operating instruction to knit this as fair aisle. It's, it isn't this card, but um, it's going to be the same procedure. So I'm gonna insert my card and lock it on row one. Yes, it is a, a fully punched row. On row one. And actually, no, sorry, I'm good because I've used card four. I'm going to have to follow this pattern for card four down here, the fair aisle, because otherwise I'm going to be talking a lot of gibberish. Um, so card number four is going to produce this pattern. So insert card, lock it on row one. My uh, stitching indicator length is on S for short. And uh, my side levers need to go back. Because it's telling me to move them back. Russell levers on two. Uh, weaving brush is not engaged, which is what that circle means. And then I have the carriage on stockinette to begin with. Um, and because my carriage isn't at the left, I can't just do the one row. I'm going to have to do two. That's fine. It's going to read the pattern in. Okay. So to follow this now as it is written... On to the second part of the operating, the operating table for row numbers one and two. I'm going to release the card. That's what that arrow means. Release it. And then I'm not going to change anything yet because I just wanted to knit two plain rows. So I'm not going to put yarn B in yet. Just knit two rows. Because the arrows to and fro say two. The card has rotated, so it's now on row three. So what I have to do now on row three is change my um, cam setting to fair isle, which is round there on the right hand side, and introduce yarn B and knit 10 rows. I should have set my row counter. So I'll do that now. I've knitted two rows. And introduce yarn B and knit 10 rows. Now, as with any other fair aisle, I will pull the needle nearest to the carriage out to D on every row. Ooh, that's going to fall on the floor, that's okay. I just noticed my row counter tripper wasn't actually tripping, so I only unpacked this machine out of the box today. So I have done eight rows. Rows. Nine. And ten. So there's my rows. Oh, I need to twelve, sorry, not ten. I'm going to read it properly. So I've knitted my rows 3 to 12, rows 13 and 14, reset the cam to stockinette and remove yarn B. 
and move it back round to stocking it. Take out yarn B. Oops, come out. I got stuck on something. And knit two rows. Then I'm going to reintroduce yarn B. For 15 to 24, reintroduce yarn B and reset it to Fair Isle. And pull the end needle out. Let's move these weights up. Right, so that's um, row 24 done. Um, I want to remove yarn B again. Keep splitting, get stuck under there, never mind. Put that back to stockinette, as it says for rows 25 to 26. And knit two rows. Is basically the repeat of that pattern. So put that back in there and knit to row 36. Um, yep. So now I haven't got my punch card clips down here with me, so I haven't joined the cards into a circle. So I'll just knit one more repeat of this and then remove it so you can see. Now to obviously cease pattern knitting, I would normally lock the card or remove it, uh, remove my second colour, which I will actually break off. Scissors. They're not tangled up at each other. Reset the carriage to stock in it, and then I can bring my side levers forward. For those of you that don't fully understand it, you can set your cam lever to whatever stitch you like on here. But if your side levers are forward, the carriage won't knit in pattern. It's the action of putting the side levers forward from the circle back to the triangle that then instructs the carriage to knit in the pattern that you've selected on this dial. It, this doesn't on its own tell the carriage to knit a pattern. You have to do it in conjunction with the side levers. Uh, right, so I put it back to stock and stitch. So there's my Fair Isle sample knitted. Well, here we have it. But uh, in our weight, that has made a really thick, warm fabric. But you've got quite a big float cross there, and it's one, two, three, four, five stitches. 
so you've got quite a long float. You might want to preferably choose a pattern that doesn't have quite such a long float running across the back. But um, I mean, obviously, I think it's more problematic with kids' things, but you know, I've got garments that have got long floats on them. You just have to remember to be careful when you're putting it on and off. Um, I don't know, husbands and children aren't terribly careful about these things a lot of the time, are they? But there we go, Fair Isle knitting. Nice pattern, that one. Now then, did card four do tuck? Can't remember. Card four. Ah, uh, tucked it. Yes, it did. Oh, goody, so I can just use the same card. Right, so we'll put this back on, on row one. And make sure my side leads are forward for casting on. I mean, preferably, I don't like to have the card in there, but there we go. Right, ravel cord. Hold down, well down under the machine. And don't move your hands about. <laughs> Bit of weight on here and knit a few more rows. Right, so now if I had not yet put my tuck my pattern card in, I just put it in and locked it and needed to read it in. The way you do that is to use that pattern release knob on the right hand side to lift the carriage up. And then it will make two, you can make a part one or two passes, however many you need to get to the right place. There we go. And it will then read the pattern into the drums. So ready to go. So to knit tuck, release the card. I still want it on the short length. I don't want it doubled. Side levers back and select tuck on the left hand side. Um, sometimes for tuck, well, also for fair old, although I didn't do it on that sample, you can loosen the tension a little bit um, so that the tucking threads don't get too tight and don't get caught on your sink posts or anything like that. Now we need tuck brushes for tuck. And these just slide on the side of the carriage. Oh, this is the right hand. I'll put the left one on when I get over the other side because it's easier to slide on from the, the very edge. They just slide in. I think mean, it's going to just slide in there, but I'll do it when the carriage is at the end. All right, reset row counter to zero. And knit the first row of tuck. That's the tuck brush on. I don't think it does anything on the first two rows of this because they were blank. Yeah, that's right. So it's not actually going to start tucking now until this row because I can see there's a pattern. If I lock the card, I can see what pattern is going to come up by the positioning of the teeth, which is a good way of checking where you are on a card. Just don't forget to release it again. As I have done on many an occasion, you look up and you've just knitted the same row about 10 times. You think, oh, start again. All right, here we go. Now, my recommendation, generally speaking, on tuck is to pull the two, uh, the needles both ends out to D so that they always knit back. But for speed, I'm not going to do it. I'll just demonstrate it here once. Both needles, both ends out to D and knit back. Out to D and knit back. Well, I will just carry on knitting for a bit of speed this time.
And there you can see your tuck pattern. Hopefully you can see it appearing. A bit low down, isn't it? There we go. The tuck pattern appearing. this nice sort of like checkerboard effect on this particular card number four it's really nice I like that one I like that one quite the fair old bit too so um that's how to do pattern knitting uh remember you know insert card lock it read the pattern in set your carriage up and remember to put the side levers back so your carriage then knows it has to knit in pattern when the side levers are back it then tells the carriage what it's basically doing is the carriage then knows that it's got to push the needles through different channels according to the holes or the blanks on the card. And then the setting on here will say, well, am I going to knit that hole, that, that needle on a hole with a different colour or am I going to skip it or tuck it or what am I going to do with it? Um, but it's the side levers that tell the carriage to do that extra work. I can't feel it so much on this machine, but on my standard gauge machine, I can tell the difference just on normal stockinette as to when the side levers are forwards or back. Having them back makes the carriage work harder, so I don't use it unless I'm pattern knitting. I know some of the old books said just put them back and forget about it, which is a bit of a bizarre instruction, but you, know, you need to learn what the function of those things is, and it's to tell the courage to knit in pattern. If you're not knitting in pattern, don't have them back. So pull them forward. Um, I'm going to finish patterning. I'll take the card out now, remove it and lock. Reset my carriage, put my tension back down, so take the little tuck brushes off and just carry on knitting. So there we go. Let's cut this one. But um, that set of punch cards I showed you earlier, the M1011, has got some beautiful tuck patterns in there. Um, you might find it on one of the websites, Needles of Steel, possibly, or uh, machineknittingetc.com. I'm not quite sure if they have punch cards on there, but um, um, there was a set up for sale on eBay recently. They do appear quite regularly. There we go. Oh and show you the finished result. Um, not quite so effective on the reverse, but on the right, in inverted commas, side, front side, knit side, but on the pearl side, tuck is nearly always used on the, uh, the pearl side, obviously because it's very textural and that's where you get the best effect from it. But, um, but I love tuck stitch on these chunky machines. It gives really nice for those like thick jackets and sweaters and things, it was, looks very good. So I hope this has answered some of your questions about using the 155 machine, and particularly with relation to this whole 12 stitch versus 24 stitch thing. Um, I mean, I started off buying a brother chunky machine, but because I was so used to using a knit master, I found that every time I used it, I had to get the instruction book out and it was just tedious, so I, I thought, oh, shall I swap it? Shall I? But I swapped it, and I honestly have not regretted it. Um, I don't think there's been a single occasion where I thought, I'll blast it, I can't knit that on my chunky machine because it's only 12 stitches. But then again, I don't knit a lot of motifs, so there we go. So just don't, don't let it put you off. It's uh, still a fabulous machine. They still make it, you can still buy one new, and um, it'll last you for a lifetime. They are built to last, real workhorse. And there we go. Um, if you've got any questions, just let me know. Thank you.